Welcome to this tutorial we are going to be doing on the movement types that the joints in our body are going to allow and in this video we are going to focus on the type called angular movements. Simply put, angular movements are going to be movements that are increase or decrease an angle between bones. That sounds simple right? But we have to know how to name them all properly so let's do a few uh, examples together. So we're increasing or decreasing the angle between bones and I'll just put up on the screen as well that we have this drawing here in the anatomical position from an anterior view and also from a lateral view. So now we can get started with our first angular movement straight away and that movement is called flexion. Now flexion is going to be when you are bending or decreasing the angle between joints. Now I'll draw an example of this here. So if we have our arm out straight in the anatomical position, we can see this angle here. But if we bend our arm upwards, bend our elbow forwards as if we were doing a bicep curl, we're going to be decreasing the angle at our elbow. So that's going to be elbow flexion. And just to put as well, if we do the same thing on our leg, our leg doesn't bend forwards, it will bend backwards. But that's still decreasing an angle. So that's just going to be knee flexion. So flexion is going to be decreasing the angle between two articulating bones that are usually in the sagittal plane of our body. So bending either forward or backward. The sagittal plane going from the front to the back of our body. Our next movement type is extension. An extension is simply the reverse of what we're doing in flexion. So we're just straightening back out bones that are flexed or joints that are flexed. So we're increasing an angle and I'll put it just here where we already did the elbow flexion. If we straighten it back out we're extending it. So that's going to be elbow extension. So when we see someone standing in the anatomical position, we're seeing them with their limbs fully extended. So none of their joints are bent in any weird directions. They're extended. But if we extend past where our joints are when they are relaxed, we call that hyperextension. And I'm going to use our head as an example for this. So extending past our anatomical position. So when we decrease the angle we're doing flexion and if we have a look here just using our head as an example we've got this straight line here which will be this joint relaxed. So our head is relaxed and we can flex it forward. We can bring our head down toward our chest and that will be flexion. So I'll just put here, we've got this angle here and that's the joint relaxed and then the joint flexed. But if we push our head backwards or lean our head backwards as if we're looking up toward the sky, we're increasing that angle that we have when the joint is relaxed. And that's what we call hyperextension. So just think of hyperextension as an addition to extension rather than a completely different movement type. Now the next movement we're going to be looking at which is also an angular movement is abduction. And with abduction we're taking something away from the midline of our body or moving something away from the midline. And this is going to happen laterally. So laterally. Now if we have the midline of our body here and with one of our arms in our resting or anatomical position here, we're going to have this angle. But if we lift it further away from the body, laterally like this, we're going to be increasing that angle. So moving outwards and that's what we call abduction. So you can think that we're abducting something away from the body. And if we can abduct something away, then we can also move it toward and that movement will be called 
adduction. So we're adding it back on to the body. So that's bringing toward our midline. And I'll just show that on our other arm. So we're bringing it toward laterally, now laterally being out to the side. So we've got our midline and we've got this angle here. And if we were to bring our arm closer to our body, so decrease this angle and put your hand directly on your hip, that would be adduction. You're bringing that limb closer toward your midline. And this can be any movement with your limbs, so don't think of it as just your arms. So I'll put down on your leg here, we have that midline again, and we have this angle. And if we're going to be lifting something out to the side here, we're abducting it. So if we're lifting our leg away from the body sideways, we're abducting it. And if we're bringing our legs closer together or closer toward the midline, we're adducting back in. So once again, this movement has to be laterally. If you were to lift your shoulder forward or lift your entire arm forward, that would not be uh, abduction. That would simply be shoulder flexion. So you're decreasing the angle of your shoulder joint. So it has to be laterally if we're talking abduction or adduction. And our last angular movement we're going to look at is something called circumduction. Now circumduction is just a circular limb movement, basically with a stationary joint or a mostly stationary joint. So I'll just clear up some room where I had a abduction of the arm so I can show you what circumduction is. So we've got a stationary joint and right here, if we have this circular rotation or circular movement here, but we have an almost stationary joint, so our shoulder, we can see that we're going to be rotating our arm in what is going to look like a cone shaped movement. So our shoulder is staying in the same place, but our arm is circumducting around that point. So it's a cone shaped movement. So circumduction. And we can circumduct with our leg as well, but our hip would be the stationary joint. Now we'll cover one more type of movement in this video, but just for reference, it's not an angular movement. It's a movement type of its own and it's called rotation. So it's when a joint is going to rotate around its own axis. Now, we're not increasing or decreasing the angle between different joints here, so it can't be angular. And I'll use uh, shaking your head as an example. If we move our head side to side or look to your left or look to your right, so shaking your head, that's rotation. So now that we know the basics about all of these angular movements as well as rotation, we can begin to decide for ourselves what a specific movement would be best classified as. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at our last movement type, which is gliding movements. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon.